How do you unit test command handlers when using the CQRS architecture? In this video, I'm going to pick one of the existing command handlers that I have in the application and I'm going to show you how I write unit tests for command handlers. The end goal is to achieve 100% code coverage and we'll see if I'm able to do it at the end of the video. I'm going to choose the create member command handler as the command handler that we are going to be writing tests for. Let's quickly take a look at the handle method and see what are the things that are worth testing. We definitely want to write tests for this if statement here that is checking if the email that is specified is unique. We have two possible branches here. One is that the email is unique and the execution continues normally. And the other is that the email is not unique. And in that case, we return an appropriate failure result. Then we create a member. We add the member to the repository. This is also something that we can unit test. We call save changes on our unit of work. This is also possible to test and we return a member ID after the handler executes successfully. And this is another thing that we are going to be checking in our unit tests. I already prepared a test project and a single test class inside. This is where we are going to be writing our tests. I will be using XUnit as the testing library because this is the one I prefer to use when writing unit tests. Let's start with our first unit test. We're going to specify fact, which is coming from the X unit namespace, which signifies that the method that we are now going to define is a test. The naming convention that I'm going to use for unit tests is first to specify the name of the method that I'm testing. In this case, this is the handle method on our command handler. Then I always specify should by convention. Then I write what should happen. In this case, handle should return failure result and then I specify the condition under which this occurs. In this case, the condition is going to be handle should return failure result when email is not unique. So this is the first test that I'm going to write. I also have a convention for the structure of my tests. I use the arrange act assert format. So I'm going to write comments to quickly stop that out. In the arrange step, we're going to prepare everything that we need to successfully run the test. In the act step, we are going to execute our handle method. And in the assert step, we are obviously going to apply our assertions. Let's start by creating the command that we are going to be sending to the handler. I'm going to create a new instance of the create member command. And we need to specify an email, a first name and a last name. I'm going to specify some dummy data for now. Email at test.com and let's say first and last for the first name and last name. Next, I'm going to instantiate the create member command handler. So I'm going to say new create member command handler. If you take a look, I'm getting a compile error here. It says that it cannot access the internal class create member command handler. This is because if you take a look at the create member command handler definition over here, I defined it as internal. Because it is internal, it is only available inside of this assembly. So how am I going to write a unit test for this class? There's a very nice feature that you can use to enable this. All we have to do to enable this is to allow our unit test project to see internal members inside the application assembly. To do this, we need to change the project file of the Gatherly application project. I already prepared part of what is required here. If you take a look here, I'm specifying an assembly attribute for this project. The attribute that we need is the internals visible to attribute and it has only one parameter which is our unit test project. For this to work I need to specify the unit test project that is supposed to be able to see internal members in this assembly. So I'm going to say gatherly application unit test because that is the name of our test project. I'm going to save the changes and go back to our test file. And if you take a look, the compiler is no longer complaining that we cannot see this class. So let's call the constructor. It has two dependencies, the iMember repository and the iUnit of work. To provide these dependencies, I'm going to create mocks for them. And I'm going to create the mocks as fields inside of this class so that I can reuse them later on. I'm going to create a field that is going to hold a mock which is coming from the mock you library that I will be using for mocking the dependencies that I need. The type argument here is going to be I member repository and I'm going to call it member repository mock. 
I also need a mock for the unit of work. So I'm going to say private read only mock i unit of work and name the variable as unit of work mock. The fields are not initialized, so let's initialize them inside of the constructor for the member repository mock and the unit of work mock. And now we can use the mocked objects to specify them as the argument inside of our constructor. The first one that we need is the member repository mock. We access the object property on the mock and we're going to do the same for the unit of work. Let's go ahead and implement the X step now. I'm going to call the handle method on our command handler object and pass in the command that we just specified and I will pass in default for the cancellation token. Now, if you take a look, this method is asynchronous and it returns a task, but our test method is void. I'm going to update that to be async task and I need to await the handle method execution. I'm going to capture the result of the handle method inside of a variable. So I'll say result. In the assert step, we want to check that the result that we receive is actually a failure result. So I want to check that result is failure should be true. One other thing that I like to do is to check that the error on the result object is the one that I'm expecting. So I'm going to say result error should be and I need to pass in the error that I'm expecting. So that is going to be domain errors, member, email already in use. Let's go ahead and run our unit test now and see what's going on. So I'm going to press run on the unit test and we get a result back really fast. And it says that the unit test is passing. Let's quickly debug this unit test to see what's going on. I'm going to place a breakpoint here and I'm going to debug our unit test. We hit our breakpoint. We are creating a new command, a new handler, and I'm interested in what's going on inside of the handle method. If you take a look here, we are creating a new email, a new first name and last name. And this is where something interesting happens. Our member repository here is mocked, but what about our is email unique method? By default, because we didn't set up this method, it's going to return the default value, which is false. And by chance of luck, this is going to satisfy the unit test that we have written. As you can see here, the result is indeed a failure result and the error is email already in use that we are inspecting. To make sure that our test is actually correct, what we have to do is in the arrange step, we need to set up the member repository mock by calling setup and specifying an expression which is going to define what we are actually setting up. So I'm going to say I want to set up the isEmail unique method. The first argument is an email. And the way you specify that with mock you is using the it class and one of the extension methods that are available there. I'm going to say it is any email because the first argument is an email. The second argument is a cancellation token. I'm going to say it is any cancellation token. This is all that we need for the setup call. We also need to say in the setup process what our method should return. So I'm going to call return async and I'm going to say that it returns true. And let's see what's going on in this case. I expect our test to fail because we are not satisfying the condition that we have written the test for. I'm going to run the test again. And this time I'm expecting that it should fail. And it does fail because our handle method completed successfully, but we were expecting a failure result. This tells us that our test is actually working. So to fix it, I'm going to say that the isEmail unique method returns false and this should fix our test. I'm going to run it again, and this time it's going to be successful. Let's write a test for the happy path in our handler, and that is when the handler completes successfully and returns a success result. I'm going to create another test. I'm going to name this test handle should return success result when email is unique. I'm going to borrow the implementation up to the assert step to speed things up for writing our new test. So let's paste that in. In this case, the isEmail unique method in our setup should return true to specify that this email is indeed unique. And now I can write my assertion. I'm expecting that the isSuccess property of the result should be true. I can also test against the value of the result, which is the ID of the newly created member. For example, we can write something like the result value should not be empty, which checks that the value here is not equal to the default value of the type. 
In this case, because it's a GUID, it's going to check against GUID empty. Let's go ahead and run this test. As you can see, the test passes because our assertions here are satisfied. We can also write tests to verify if certain methods are called or not. I'm going to create one more test that is going to check that the repository is called with the proper value. This one I'm going to name handle should, for example, call add on the repository when email is unique. Again, I'm going to borrow the implementation from the previous test. In the assert step, I want to verify that the add method on the member repository was called with the proper values. We can do that by accessing the member repository mock and calling the verify method. And this allows us to specify an expression with a member repository that we can use to check if our method was properly called. So I'm going to say verify that the add method on the repository, which accepts a member, was called with a certain value. To do that, I need to specify an expression. I'm going to say it is a member, and I need to specify an expression that I want to satisfy. So I'm going to say it is a member with the ID equal to the result value. The result value is the ID of the member that was created. So we are testing that the member that was passed to the add method here had the ID that we have received as the result of this handle method. You can also specify a second argument that says how many times this method was supposed to be called. I expect this method to be called only once, so I can say times once. I'm going to run this test and see what it tells us. So our test passes and it verifies that the add method was called only once during the execution of the command handler and the member that was passed to the add method had the same ID that we received as the result of the handle method. If you are liking this unit testing video so far, make sure you like the video and also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. I'm going to write one more unit test. This one is going to check, for example, that our unit of work is not called when the email is not unique. Let's see how we could write a test like this. I'm going to create a new test. I'm going to call it handle should not call unit of work when the email is not unique. All right, I'm going to borrow the implementation up to the assert step from above, paste that in here. To satisfy the email is not unique part, we need to change the setup here and we need to return false for the isEmailUnique method. We can get rid of this result variable here because we don't need it for the test and we need to write our assertion. I'm going to verify on the unit of work mock. So we need to write an expression here while we are verifying. I want to verify that the save changes async method that is called with any cancellation token was not invoked at all during the execution of this test. To test that, we need to provide a second argument here specifying how many times our method was supposed to be executed. In this case, we want to verify that it was never executed, so we specify times never. Let's go ahead and run all of the tests and see if they are passing. All of the tests are green and we successfully tested most of the behavior inside of the create member command handler. Let me know in the comments if you found this unit testing video useful and if I should create more videos around testing. Make sure you take a look at these two videos I prepared for you on the screen. And until next time, stay awesome.